In this video, we're going to derive the arc length formula. So the situation we are in is that we've got some curve on an interval and we want to know the length of the curve. And you may sort of be familiar with the process by now. We're going to try to approximate approximate the length of the curve. Then we'll try to make our approximations exact using a limit to get an integral. That's definitely the right idea, but there are some complications in this uh, derivation. We'll break the interval into little sub-intervals, as we have done several times before. And we'll try to approximate the arc length on this sub-interval. And this time our approximation tool is not going to be rectangles, but straight to lines. We'll make the observation that on a small enough interval, the curve looks an awful lot like a straight line. So we can approximate the arc length on this interval by finding the length of this line segment. And the length of a line segment connecting two points is the distance between those points. And we have a formula, a distance formula. So let's go. Let's, for simplicity, call this x sub i, y sub i, instead of x sub i, f of x sub i. And this will be x sub i plus one, y sub i plus one. And the length of this line segment, and thus our approximation on this little subinterval. is the square root of y sub i plus one minus y sub i squared plus x sub i plus one minus x sub i squared. And now we'll add all of these approximations up. We can repeat this process on each sub interval to get a bunch of approximations. And we'll add those approximations up to get an approximation of the 
actual arc lengths that we are looking for. And now a disaster strikes, or if not a disaster, at least a complication occurs. Our next step should be to turn this into an integral by taking a limit except that integrals aren't limits of arbitrary sums. Integrals are limits of Riemann sums. And Riemann sums have a very specific form. And this is not it. This is not a Riemann sum. So we can't take a limit to turn this into an integral. What to do? Here is what we have. And the trick we are going to use here is perhaps not a very obvious one. We are going to use the mean value theorem. So that's a blast from the past. We discussed the mean value theorem all the way back in Calculus 1. And what this says is that as long as our curve is nice and continuous, we can find some um, number c sub i in this interval such that the derivative at c sub i, the exact rate of change, equals the average rate of change. And what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite to this so that we have This difference written in terms of this dif difference and the derivative And then we are going to take this and we are going to plug it into that approximation. When we do that, we get this. And you see we have this term up here twice inside this square root. Let's pull it out of this sum. And then 
let's pull it out of this square root. Now, you know that Riemann sum we wanted. This delta x sub i that appears in a Riemann sum is precisely the length of the ith sub interval. In other words, it's precisely this. So here's how we've managed to rewrite the length on one little sub interval. If we repeat that process on every sub interval and add our results together, we get the following approximation of the arc length. And what is this approximation of the arc length but a Riemann sum? So to make this approximation exact, we take the limit as these delta x sub i's go to zero. And we get that the arc length is the integral from a to b of the square root of one plus the derivative of the function squared dx. So in order to use this formula, we do need this function to be differentiable. That's not a requirement we had when we were looking at volumes, for example. And here's the arc length formula. This is good to know, but you should be aware that we are very rarely going to be able to actually compute this integral. And we'll talk about that in the next video.